Hello, my name's Pip and I volunteer with Greenpeace. Before we start today's session, this is just a reminder that we will be doing a poster making activity at the end of a session. So make sure you or your teacher or your youth leader has some poster making materials ready for this. There is also an instruction sheet that we've sent around to anyone who signed up for the session. So if you need some help, you can have a look at that. So now a little bit more about Greenpeace. Greenpeace is a group of people who work together to protect the natural world. It is our mission to make a greener, healthier and more peaceful planet. A planet on which people and animals can live happily together for many, many more years. I am going to pass you over to my friend Nikki, who will introduce herself and tell you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing today. Hi everyone, my name is Nikki, and like Pip, I also work with Greenpeace. Today, we'll be taking you on a journey through the oceans to discover exactly what makes them so special, why they're in danger, but most importantly, what you can do to help protect our oceans. But first, let's check our ocean knowledge. I've got a question for you all. How much of the planet's surface do you think is covered by oceans? Is it about 51%, about 71% or about 81%? I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to think about it. So go ahead. Okay, so most of our planet's surface is covered by oceans. To answer the question, about 71% or over two thirds of the planet's surface is water. There are five oceans in the world. In size order, they are right from the biggest, the Pacific Ocean. Then we have the Atlantic, Indian and Southern Oceans. And then finally, the smallest of them all, the Arctic Ocean, just at the top. Although they have been separated into different areas, they are all actually one continuous body of water. One really cool fact about the oceans is that we've actually studied the surface of Mars in greater detail than we have our own ocean floor. So there is still so much more to be discovered under the waves. So now we know that the oceans cover a large part of the Earth's surface. But here's a question for you. Why do you think the oceans are so important? It's a tricky question, so I'll give you a few seconds to discuss it with your partner or just think about it in your head. Perfect. So I'm sure that you came up with some brilliant ideas, but here are a few reasons why we think the oceans are so important. The first reason is that they help us to breathe. Oceans produce almost half of the world's oxygen because just like trees do on land, there are plants underwater which can photosynthesize and produce oxygen. And this then gets released into the atmosphere. The second reason is that our oceans provide us with food. Do you remember the last time you had fish for dinner? Well, over a billion people in the world depend on our oceans for fish and other types of seafood. The third reason is that many of the medicines we use today, for example, those to treat cancer or heart disease, actually use ingredients from the oceans. Now, do you remember that only a tiny proportion of our oceans have actually been explored. Well, just think about how many more medicines we can maybe produce if we explore the rest of our oceans. Now, I'm sure that many of you have heard of climate change. Well, our oceans have a large role in keeping our climate balanced too. 
They can do this because they absorb large amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And this helps our Earth from becoming too hot. This is also known as global warming. And the last reason why our oceans are so important is because they are home to some amazing wildlife. And we'll have a look at some now. Here's a quick challenge for you. Can you name any of these animals who call the oceans their home? Again, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to chat to the person next to you or have a think in your head about some of the names of these animals. Before you start, you might name them really quickly, in which case, have a think about some other animals you can think of who live under the sea. Your 10 seconds starts now. Okay, good job if you got some of those, but if not, no worries, I'm gonna chat you through some of them now. Okay, so just above me here, we have some dolphins. And then a long one next to the dolphins, rolling around in the snow, there is a leopard seal. Good job if you've got a seal. And then the next one along is a short-haired seahorse. So then, down here next to me, I'm blocking it a bit, but this one here, pointed the wrong way then, this one here is a hermit crab. That one's quite difficult, so if you manage to get a crab, that's really good. And then the final one just on the bottom right is an olive ridley turtle. You might have got these or you might have gotten loads of other animals who live under the sea because there are so many animals from our planet who find their homes under the water. In fact, eight out of every 10 creatures on Earth lives in the oceans. So that's all of these animals here and so, so many more. Unfortunately, our oceans are in danger. Have a think to yourself or talk to the person next to you. What do you think are the threats that our ocean faces? Here are a few pictures to help you think of a few ideas. All right, so the images on the screen show us the three main threats that face our oceans today. These are plastic pollution, overfishing, and drilling for oil. Let's have a look at these problems in a bit more detail. The first of these dangers is plastic pollution. I've got another question for you. Have you used any plastic today? If so, what did you use it for? Your toothpaste this morning might have come in a plastic tube or maybe some of your breakfast this morning came packaged in plastic. I'm going to give you another about 10 seconds to chat to your partner or think in your head about some plastic that you might have come across today. Go ahead. Okay, I'm sure you came up with lots of really good examples of plastic that you have encountered today in your life. And that's because plastic is a really big part of our everyday lives. But unfortunately, it is a huge threat to our oceans. This is because every single minute, a truck load of plastic is dumped in our oceans. So imagine yourself counting up to a minute. You go one, two, three, four, and so on until you reach 60 seconds and then another truckload of plastic is dumped in our oceans. Once plastic enters the oceans, it's a real threat to marine animals like the turtles, dolphins and crabs that we talked about earlier. This is because they can become entangled in the plastic waste or they can mistake it for their food, which can often lead to injury and even death. As we mentioned before, over a billion people in the world 
get their food from the oceans. And to provide for so many people, humans have become better and better at catching fish. But this presents some big problems for the oceans. First one is that we're just taking out too many fish. This is called overfishing. With modern technology, boats can track huge groups of fish and catch them all in one go. This means that we're just taking out too many fish for them to be replenished naturally. And then there is a problem of bycatch. When fishing boats drag large nets through the oceans, they can accidentally trap and hurt animals like this turtle over here and others such as sharks and dolphins. The third problem is that of habitat destruction. Do you know what a habitat is? Have a quick think to yourself or talk to the person next to you. All right, so a habitat is basically just a place where animals, plants and other organisms live. When giant boats called super trawlers drag large fishing nets across the ocean floor, they can smash into everything in their path and this destroys habitats. So as you can see, destructive fishing presents a real problem for our oceans. The third danger is drilling for oil. I've got another question for you. Do you know what oil is? I'm going to give you another 10 seconds to chat to the person next to you or have a think in your head about what you think oil might be. Go ahead. Okay, oil is a liquid found deep underground. It was formed in the earth hundreds of millions of years ago. Right now, oil is a huge part of our lives because it heats our homes and fuels most of our cars. Big companies get this oil by drilling deep into the ocean floor and taking the oil out. They do this using oil rigs like in the top picture. But these oil rigs cause huge risk because drilling can and does cause oil spills like in the bottom picture there. When this oil is spilled, it poisons the water and the coastlines, uh, which makes sea creatures really sick and can cause huge health risks for people who live near the oceans. In order to keep our oceans safe, we need to keep oil underground. Our oceans are in danger and you might be worried thinking, well, what's the solution? But don't worry, Greenpeace have a plan. Our plan is to protect 30% of the world's oceans by 2030. And this will do by creating global ocean sanctuaries. But what exactly does that mean? Well, currently only a tiny part of our oceans, about 1%, is protected from harmful human practices, such as destructive fishing and drilling for oil. Greenpeace, along with scientists, have worked out that if we can protect 30% of our oceans, we'll be able to avoid the worst of the damage. Most of our world's oceans aren't just owned by a single country. They belong to us all. And that's why we need a global effort to create this network of sanctuaries or protected places in our oceans. We need the United Nations to create a global ocean treaty, which is a set of rules that all governments would have to agree on and follow. This would set out exactly where all the sanctuaries are and what you're not allowed to do in them. Greenpeace wants countries of the world to agree on this treaty as soon as possible and not delay any longer in protecting our oceans. By creating sanctuaries and by protecting at least 30% of our world's oceans, we can help our oceans to recover from the damage that's already been done. 
and we can help ocean wildlife to thrive. So now you know what Greenpeace are doing to fight the problem. Here is what you can do to help. It is really important that our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, makes a strong UN Global Oceans Treaty to create global ocean sanctuaries. We all need to tell him what is happening in the oceans and why they are in danger. If he understands the problem and how important this is, then he is much more likely to help us fix it. There are lots of children all over the country watching this video, so it's not just you guys, there's loads of children all watching this. If every single one of us tells Boris about what's happening, that could make a really, really big difference. We want every single person watching this to make their own poster telling Boris about what's happening in our oceans. Let's tell him that we need a global ocean sanctuary and a strong UN global ocean treaty. Nikki and I and everyone at Greenpeace would love to see your posters. So once you've made them, ask your teacher or your youth leader to take a photo or scan them and send them to us at, oh, side again, getactive.uk at greenpeace.org. We also have an online gallery of lots of different posters and we'll add lots of your posters to that gallery if you send them over to us. Next, and this one's really important, send your posters straight to Boris Johnson. His address is on the slide just here. Uh, and in with all of your amazing posters, you can add a little note to explain what they are and tell him that we need a strong UN Global Oceans Treaty. We've sent an instruction sheet to everyone who signed up for this session. So don't worry if you can't remember everything, that sheet will have all of the details on what you need to do and some top tips on what to include. So are you ready to make your poster? Brilliant. We've included a few examples on this slide to help you get started. It was lovely to speak to you all today and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Don't forget to send them to us. Bye. Bye.